Hey there. I'm not settled. There we go. All right, we are in lesson four today, um, understanding decay. We've talked a bit about growth. Now we are talking about decay. Um, and I've lost my face. I assume you guys can still see me. So annoying. <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm not sure why my face isn't showing, but um, I'm assuming that everything is getting recorded on my desktop. I'm not sure I want to really try to bring my face into it because that's super duper annoying. You would think after a whole or at least half a year of recording with Loom that I'd have it all figured out, but here we are. All right, let's just try this. Um, understanding decay. So notice wonder, we have two tables. What do you notice? What do you wonder? Um, like normal, these are the ones I love doing in class because it's just a great discussion. Um, let me turn on my highlighter. I notice that the X values in each table are the same. All right, definitely notice that. So the X values, and we can review last unit, and those are our inputs, that is our domain, um, and they are the same for each value. For table A, if I look, looks like we're going two, three and a half, five, six and a half, eight. Um, definitely getting bigger. And the Y values over here, we are also getting bigger. Um, we're at two, three, nine halves is 4.5, um, 21 over four, or 27 over four. I don't know what that is, 6.75. Let's get a pin. So 4.5, 6.75, and 10.125. So, It looks like, um, well, that one's smaller. So table A is bigger than table B, table A is bigger than table B, and then table B surpasses table A, and then table B surpasses table A. So interesting, we don't have the same pattern for each. We are growing still, okay? What else can we notice and wonder? Um, we look at both tables, start with the same XY pair. Um, these differ by 1.5. Interesting. Okay, these do not differ by incremental counts. I can't add to get to each one. Um, that's plus one, plus 1.5. And then we have 1.5, I don't know, 6.75 minus 4.5, 2.25. Oops, 2.25. And then 10 point three, this would be a plus 3.375. So um, how much we're growing in between each is getting bigger, which is something, but they don't differ by the same amount, which is important. Um, ooh. If I take 4.5 times 3 halves, there we go. So if I, let's just erase all this. I'm going to lasso it. If I actually, um, not that one though. Well, yep, 
So if I multiply each one of these by 3 halves, you can see it a lot better if you keep it in that fraction form. So this is a multiplier. I'm multiplying each one. Sorry about that. By 3 halves. Okay, so we are times 3 halves here, and we are plus 3 halves there. That's very interesting. Cool. All righty. So, what's left? All right, let's get into our lesson. Um, so, we just talked about how quantities in table A increased by the same amount, but it was addition. Co quantities in column B increased by the same amount, but it was multiplication. Okay, that's really interesting. So today we're going to look at situations where quantities change exponentially. Um, um, so we're looking at when quantities change exponentially. Which is similar to column B or table B. All right. Um, so this factor that we actually talked about in column B, which was three halves, it was a times three halves, that is our growth factor. Okay, great vocabulary word for you guys. Um, a growth factor can be. It's, it's growing is when our growth factor is greater than one. Um, that's when things are growing. They can be less than one, but we don't grow anymore. That's called a, de a decay factor. So a growth factor is when your number is greater than one. It's called a decay factor when it is less than one. Actually, it should be between zero and one. Okay, it's a fraction. It's called a decay factor. All right, so when quantities change exponentially, they can grow exponentially and they can decay exponentially. Okay, go ahead and push pause and write that stuff down. I'm going to clear this so that I can still work on this task statement, right? But you can always rewind and write it down. All right, so here's one way to think about how much Diego has left after spending a fourth of a hundred dollars. Okay, explain each step. So step one, we're going to do going to do 100 minus one fourth times 100. Well, in PEMDAS, we know we do parentheses exponents first. There aren't any. Multiplication division next. I have multiplication, so I have to do that multiplication first. And um, but let's just let's just keep going. All right, so don't worry about that. Let's look at step two and see where we're going. It looks like I factored out a 100, so it's almost like I had x minus one fourth x in step one, and I factored out that x in step two. Okay, maybe you can see it a little bit better like that. Then I actually did this subtraction and got 3 fourths. So 100 times 3 fourths. And then um, I just rearranged the order, 3 fourths times 100. All right, so here's one way to think about how much Diego has left after spending a fourth of $100. Explain each step. Um, I have $100 initial amount. And I'm subtracting a fourth of $100 because that's how much we spent. Okay, this is I have to subtract it out of my pocket because it's how much I spent. Then I'm just doing some math. Okay, 
um, doing subtraction. So if I look at step three, 100 times 3 fourths is how much remains. It's how much in my pocket. If I spent a fourth of it, I have 3 fourths left. And then reordering it, no big deal. Okay. Now, a person makes $1,800 per month, but a third of that amount goes to her rent. What two numbers can you quickly multiply to find out how much she has after paying her rent? So a third of it goes to her rent. If I do one minus one third, that means I have two thirds. I don't know why I did two. Two thirds remaining. So I can do 1,800 times two-thirds. And that gives me 1,200 remaining. Okay, so that's how I do it. Okay, find out how, what part of a whole is remaining and multiply by two-thirds. Okay, Let's see if there's another way to do it. Nope, it's exactly right. Okay, now write an expression that only uses multiplication, and that is equivalent to x reduced by one eighth of x. So that's just like I'm spending an eighth of whatever, okay, of x. So what's remaining is the part of the whole. 1 minus 1 eighth is 7 eighths. That's how much is remaining. So I would do x times 7 eighths. Or 7 eighths times x. It doesn't matter. Okay, this, right, this will give us what remains. Okay? All right. Value of a vehicle. Let's try to put it into real, um, real examples. So every year after a new car is purchased, it loses a third of its value. Let's say a new car cost eighteen thousand dollars. A buyer worries that the worries that the car will be worth nothing in three years. Do you agree? Explain your reasoning. So if I lose a third each year, what this buyer is wondering is. Do I, do I take the whole amount and subtract a third of it each year? Well, if I combine these things together, that would be minus all of it. If I lose, let's let me write it like this. Let me erase that. What is a third of eighteen thousand? Okay, $6,000. So one third of 18,000 equals $6,000. So this buyer is assuming that 18,000, I'm gonna lose $6,000 the first year, $6,000 the second year, and $6,000 the third year. That's what they're assuming. That means my value would be zero at the end of three years. So year one, year two, and year three. Zero at the end of that. Okay, that's not right. Okay. If we're losing a third each year, we're actually losing a third of the value that's remaining. All right. So let's see. I'll just change colors. If we lose, start out with 18,000. Get rid of these. Yep. If I lose a third the first year, I have twelve thousand remaining. Now twelve thousand. If I lose a third the next year, I'm going to lose four thousand. That means I have 800 remaining, 8,000 remaining. If 
I lose a third this next year, I'm losing $2,666.67. Okay, do you see, we won't, we won't get to zero. It's not equal to zero after three years. So year one, year two, and year three does not get to zero. And we'll get to um, how we actually figure that out. So if we fill out this table, write an expression to show how to find the value. So in year one, we're gonna multiply these by one minus one third, which is going to be two thirds. So this is the value remaining, very important. Remaining. So in year one, we have 18,000 times two thirds is my expression. Then in year two, 18,000 times two thirds times two thirds. Or I could say 18,000 times two thirds squared. And if I just quickly do that math, 18,000 times two thirds times two thirds. I have 8,000, which is what we said right there after year two. Okay, year three, 18,000 times two thirds times two thirds times two thirds. If I take that, I'm just gonna check. If I do that math, ooh, I would get whatever the subtraction would be, which is $5,333. Or I'm gonna write it much neater, 18,000 times 2 thirds to the third power. Okay, six, I'm not gonna write out all those steps, but I know it's gonna be 18,000 times 2 thirds to the sixth power. And if I do just T, 18,000 times two-thirds to the t power, okay? So write an equation relating the value of the car in dollars, V, to the number of years. So we can say V of t, we're just going to say V is 18,000 times two-thirds raised to the t power. And we can put anything in there. Okay, now use your equation to find V when T is zero. So that would be my initial amount. That's before the car depreciates at all. And you should remember from a previous lesson that anything raised to the zero power, go ahead and do it in your calculator. Anything raised to the zero power is in fact one. It's always going to be one. 18,000 times 1, which equals 18,000, which is our initial value. That's an A, sure. Our initial value, okay? A different car loses value at a different rate. The value of this different car in dollars, D, after T years, can be re represented by this equation. Explain what the numbers 10,000 and 4 fifths mean in this situation. So this means that our initial value of the car, what the purchase price was, I'll say purchase price, that might make better sense to some of you, equals $10,000. And we're losing value, go up here, we're not losing four-fifths of the value. Four-fifths is what remains. So we're losing value at one-fifth per year. And we can say four-fifths of the value is remaining. Cool. All right, are you ready for more? Hey, do you want some quiz, extra credit points? I'm getting your emails when you're doing them.
I write them down on my little post-it note. Okay, so I'm keeping track. Send me an email and I will reply back to you. Start with an equilateral triangle with one area, with area one square unit. Divide it into four congruent pieces and remove the middle. And then repeat it here. Divide into four, remove the middle. Here and here. Divide into four, remove the middle. What fraction of the area is removed each time? So if I split it into four equal pieces and I remove it, I'm removing a fourth. Okay, what's remaining? Now, how much area is removed after the nth step? Use a calculator to find out how much remains in the triangle after 50 such steps have been taken. Go ahead and try it. And that is it for today. All right, good work.